Let's bring in our panel now. Lisa Goddard from Adoni Media joins us in Melbourne and Stephen Senatiempo, 2CC breakfast host in Canberra, joins us from the nation's capital. What do you make of all this, Lisa? Of course, a lot of Labor MPs uh, telling journalists now that they don't hold out, much, hold out much hope for this referendum, even with four weeks to go. Yeah, Chris, I think the point there is it's four weeks to go and it's going to be four very long weeks. Look, it is, it's just, it's just fueling, as you said, it's division. There is, you're encouraging debate. I think what we're seeing now is just really nasty and, and dirty low-level arguments that are happening. You've got continued name-calling. We are four weeks out. Postals are now open. People are being told they need to register. I don't think that the general community who aren't tuned in to the voice debate... All of this is just washing over them. I think they'll either turn up ignorant to what is actually being de debated or discussed or will go with what they think is the vibe. What worries me is I've been at two different functions in this past week where you've had a very clear divide in a room, a minority of people who either didn't applause or didn't uh, admit that they weren't going to vote yes, and then you've got an overwhelming number of people in that room who were cheering and, and all behind that yes campaign. So I still think there is a lot of people in this country who are too frightened, and I don't think Langton's comments today did anything to change this, that they'll be seen as racist or you know, stupid if they do admit to not supporting this campaign. So... I don't know, it's going to be, like I said, a very long four weeks and possibly a very ugly one. Yeah, look, I've got to say, all year I've been thinking this campaign was going to be pretty tough, Stephen, but it's been uglier than I even expected, mm. I suppose, so far. Mainly, I suppose, because it's so partisan. Uh, I mean, Peter Dutton and Anthony Albanese are now locked in a titanic partisan struggle over this issue, which is such a sensitive I issue for the country. Well, I, I, but I mean, is it is it sensitive? You know, I mean, the reality is that th this debate was always going to be as ugly as it was because it was coming from the positions that it was. And you know, as somebody that is firmly on the no side of this debate, I, I've got to say that the yes camp has been completely dishonest uh, from the very beginning. I mean, it, it's very much like many of the campaigns that that side of politics run. They well, start well, from a position of dishonesty, just, and, if just, you, just, and if you call them out, well, they call just, you a conspiracy let, theorist or a racist. Well, let's call them out then. Tell me an example. Give me an example where the yes case has been dishonest. Well I mean, well, well, a classic example is, you know, when when, any, when somebody says, I want more information on this, I want to understand what this is, you're told there's plenty of information out there, go look it up yourself. There's no direct answers to any direct questions. And the, the very basis of this is, and I've had two Labor politicians say this on my program this week, that, you know, they'll tell you that there's been no progress whatsoever in the plight of Aboriginal Australians in the last 200 years, which is an out-and-out -out lie. That is dishonest to start with. So telling us we've no, made no progress whatsoever is just absolutely wrong. And, that, and that's where this starts from. We've got to do something different. Well, this is not something different. This is about the ninth version of something we've done before. So that's dishonest in, in and of itself. The, and then when they'll tell you, well, there's plenty of information out there. Well, is there? If, there, if indeed the Uluru mm. statement is just that one motherhood state, one page of motherhood statement, well, that doesn't tell us how this voice is going to be formed. What we do know is that the parliament is going to decide how this is going to be formed. It's going to be politicians on the given day who decide what this thing is going to be and they're not telling us what they're going to do. Well, that's it. You've got the exact wording of the constitutional amendment and, the, and Parliament will decide the shape of the voice. But, I've that's called not for what more... the, but, that, but that's but, but that's not what the voice is going to look like. That's what the constitutional change is, yeah, Chris. Yeah. Well, that's the only thing being decided at the referendum, though. You, the referendum can't decide what the voice is going to look like. And as I say, I agree exactly. they should have put more detail exactly. out. But what about all, uh, the, the, so much of the misinformation from the No campaign, Lisa? This nonsense about the Uluru statement being... 15, 18, 26, 100 pages when it's just a statement that uh, is on everybody's school, uh, uh, school hall I in the country. And also these fears about reparations and treaty and all sorts of things they say the voice will do when they all know the voice is only advisory. It can't actually enact anything. It can only ask governments to enact things. But I think it's about what's coming next. So, again, one of the, the events I was at in this past past week or so, there was a, an acknowledgement of country, a welcome to country, which went for about 20 minutes. Now, included in that was the, the uh, raising cheer at the end where it was about voice, treaty, truth-telling. And I think the people who are sitting on the no side of the campaign or the soft no's, which Noel Pearson says he's now going to respectfully try to, to work on or you know, inform... I think they're the ones that listen to those welcome to countries and hear the, the three things. They hear the treaty and the truth-telling go, well, well, what is coming? And as Stephen said, 
We don't know. It hasn't been clearly explained. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I don't know what people are so scared about. Truth-telling uh, and treaty. And my, my point is the voice can't give you a treaty. Everybody knows. Clearly, it's in the wording. It's advisory only. Yet there's all don't. these fear campaigns about land rights but, and uh, treaty and reparations. But, but hang on. And everybody saying Chris, that knows the voice cannot deliver it. But, yeah, but well, no, no, that's not true, Chris, because the constitutional, it is true. It the, is constitu true. the constitutional change allows the parliament to determine the powers and formation of this voice. E exactly. Now, if we, if God, exactly. Forbid, if God forbid the Greens, if God forbid the Greens ever, ever win government, they could give this thing unwielding powers. Well, exactly, mate, all the powers with the parliament. That's the point. You can't take the but, power uh, exactly. away from the parliament. And we, and, we, and we live with that every day. That's exactly Gov right. Governments do what governments do. Parliaments do what parliaments do. You're making an argument against parliamentary democracy now. No, I'm making, a, I'm making an, an argument against us voting on something to allow parliaments to then decide on another form of democracy. That's, that's what happens in every referendum. We vote to change the constitution. It's happened 40-odd times. Yeah. I mean, if we, if we, if we were and too scared to put anything in the Constitution, we wouldn't have become a federation, for crying out loud.